Hey guys, here's a video tutorial guide on how to put together the relaxing apartment from my original showcase. First, I want to thank you guys so much for all of the positive comments on the original video. It was my first time doing anything like that, so it was very exciting to see that so many people really liked the design. If you haven't had a chance to see it and would like to, there will be a link to the original video in the description. I decided to split it into two parts because there's a lot of content that I wanted to go over, and I didn't really want it to turn into a one hour long video. To be able to follow along with this, you will need to have some basic understanding of the housing glitches so that you can place furniture down in different areas throughout the room. But for those of you who are new to the housing glitches, I'll also be leaving additional resources in the video description that you can reference as you need them. Also in the description will be a list of all of the items that are being used in the room, together with all of the dyes that are being used to color them. One thing to keep in mind is that this room was put together in a top mast apartment, so all of the default interior components that I also include with the design, like the pillars and the door, will also be different if you live in another housing area. So if you intend to copy the design outside of the mist, you may need to play with it a little bit more for the room to come together. So with that said, let's go ahead and get right into it. The first thing that we'll focus on is going to be setting up the interior components, and then building up the walls. So what I like to do first is I like to set the lighting down to 1. This helps me to understand how I want to play with the lighting as I'm putting the room together. You don't necessarily need to do this right now, especially if you find that the room becomes too dark as you're putting furniture down. But this is just something that I personally like to do because it helps me to get a better feeling for the natural lighting of the room. Of the interior components that I am able to edit, I like to change the flooring and the chandelier to the topmast flooring and the Riviera chandelier. The wallpaper that comes with the topmast apartment by default is also called the Riviera wallpaper. Now that those have been set, we can move over to the long wall to start setting up the windows. The way that I like to do this is to set up a column of windows on the wall to see how high I want each row of windows to be. The snap grid feature is really helpful for this because it makes the alignment of the other windows a lot easier later on. Then using the wall item glitches, we can float these two windows in front of the middle pillar. And as soon as we exit layout mode, they should snap to the wall that's behind it. This will allow us to center the entire arrangement of windows on the wall. My original intent with these windows was actually to try to open the space up a lot more. Uh, I kind of felt that the room was originally kind of small compared to the size of my character. By this point, I had been playing around with a lot of different ideas as far as to how I can make this place appear larger than what it actually was. And one of the things that I noticed consistently as I was experimenting was that the windows really did make the place feel a lot more open. No other item really had the same effect in my opinion. The imitation square windows in particular are currently my favorite type of window. Because a single item takes up a lot of space on the wall and their design is simple enough that they don't clash that much with a lot of other furniture choices. Moving on to the back wall, I like to put down a set of windows on the upper half of the wall and then put down a set of partitions in front of them to move them forward. I wanted to try and add some depth to the room by having these windows at the back so you could see them when you first walk in. But I also wanted to hide the original windows because I didn't feel that they matched that well with the rest of the room. The final step for the walls is to start placing a couple of lights along the upper half of the window wall. Now the main reason that I actually placed these here is because it was a little bit jarring to see the windows that were incredibly impressive during the day become really sad and lonely at night. So this was my way of trying to rebalance that. For these I like to place them as close to the pillars as I can. And this way when you're looking at it you can't really tell that they're not exactly mounted to anything. But to do that, I need to place them into my storage and use the preview placement until I find that they're just about centered and as close as they will appear before I finalize the placement through the rotation. The last two lamps can actually just be placed normally, and I'll center these on the beams that come from the windows on either side of the middle pillar. I personally think that the placement of these lights really help emphasize the night and day cycle of the room. This effect becomes a lot more apparent at night when the only perceived lighting is coming from within the room rather than from the outside. To be fair, with the game system, all of the lighting is actually being generated within the room, but it's more a matter of where you perceive that it's coming from that matters the most. This is why I think that the placement of the lights is very important when you're coming up with a design. The next thing that I want to focus on is going to be setting up the layout for the second floor. I'll start out by placing a shower down so that I can get a measurement for how high I want the second floor to be. 
Then, using the snap grid feature, I'll take a wooden loft and place it one step above the shower head so that it is peeking out the bottom. This measurement will be more important for when we move on to the bathroom section in part 2. I like to place each loft so that they're right in between each of the pillars. And then once I'm done, I'll just go ahead and pick up the shower again because it'll get in the way for when we're placing furniture down on the second floor. From there, we can actually just move on to the stairs. The entire staircase is built using the wall item glitches. The reason for this is because the way that I had it set up was actually backwards so I couldn't just place them directly on the wall. By the time I realized I needed the stairs as I was building this design originally, I had already placed on so much furniture that I didn't want to redo it so I did it backwards. The main reason that the stairs is in the corner here is actually to conserve space. And I did have to get a little bit creative with how I made the lower half of the staircase because there wasn't exactly a platform that I could just simply put there as the middle step. It actually took me a while to figure out that I could use a wooden loft for this part without it looking too weird. Now one of the things that you might notice is that the pieces for the staircase have different colors. I'm not entirely sure why, but I did feel that it looked a lot better when they were mismatched colors. And this effect will actually become a lot more apparent when we put the lights that are up above it. But with this, we now have the layout for the second floor done. Now we can move on to putting the furniture down on the second floor. This section will use a lot of the floor item glitches, so it may be a little bit tricky if you're not familiar with them just yet. To help get the placement of the items where they need to be, we're going to need to build portions of the second floor on the first floor before we can glitch them up. I like to start with the bed and the closet, because that will be the hardest area for us to reach once all of the other furniture is put down. The bed you can place using the preview placement from your storage to get it as close to the wall as you can without it clipping into it. Now it will clip into the pillar depending on where you're living, and that's usually fine because once we put the door down in front of it, you won't actually be able to see that corner at all. I like to center it between the pillar that's by the door and the wall that's behind the corner pillar. And then as soon as that's done, you can float it up using the floor item glitches as normal. One of the main reasons that I decided to make the bed like this is because I wanted to conserve space. The second floor doesn't have a whole lot of floor space to begin with, so there wasn't really enough space for a traditional bedroom. So what I had to do is I had to get a little bit more creative with it. I based the idea off of something that I've seen in anime a couple of times, and I kind of thought that that was probably the best solution that I could have. That and it was pretty interesting to look at, I thought. Being able to build a second floor in this game is pretty interesting, I think. The only real difficult thing about it is that it's kind of awkward to do from a design perspective. I don't even want to think about how many times I had to rebuild the second floor when I was designing this the first time. I do want to mention that one of the main reasons that I left it as sort of an open space, in the sense that there's not actually a door to this area, is because by closing that space off, it would be far too cramped and generally unappealing, at least in my opinion anyway. My goal with this room was overall to make it feel inviting, and to do that, I did actually have to remove a lot of the boundaries to kind of make the space feel a lot more open so that as you were looking around the room you had a lot of things to see even just from like a different area you could see into another area. The room itself was already pretty small so I didn't want to make it feel any smaller than what it actually was. But that's actually kind of tricky when you want to divide it into different areas that you can go ahead and explore. Now, I put the bathroom door down here, but you probably don't need to do that right now. If you're finding that it's getting in the way and it makes it difficult to see into this corner that we're working on, you can always skip it for now and work on it when we get to the desk area. But if you do place it down now, you do kind of want to make sure that the other half of the door isn't clipping into the wooden loft that's behind it. I place it so that it's just barely sitting in front of the wooden loft so that there's not a gap between the loft and the upper half of the door frame. The next thing that you see me doing here is I'm trying to build the side wall for the closet area up above. This one's kind of a little bit tricky I think because you don't want it to be clipping outside of the pillar that comes from the door that's up there. But you also don't want it to clip off the bed either. And then I'll move around just to make sure that it's not going to clip outside of anything up top. The next thing I'll do is I'll float it up using the floor item glitches. This one's kind of hard, just because of the lack of space and the awkward placement. I found that it's easier to get the glitches done if you 
turn a stage panel like this and you go at it from an angle. This corner is probably the hardest part of the second floor to get into place in my opinion. Everything else after this is a lot more straightforward I think. Now this item in particular may take some time, I'm not overly fond of glitching them into high places to be honest. They're probably one of the few items that have the smallest hitbox ever. In fact, they were actually the first one that I learned how to do, and yeah, that was fun. But from here, I more or less keep at it until I see the bottom of the futon peeking out from the bottom of the partition. And then from there, I'll just go ahead and finalize it. Now there's one more final step for the closet, which is going to be the shelf that goes above the futon. One of the reasons why I decided that I wanted to put a shelf up there in the first place was because I kind of felt that the space above the bed was kind of empty by itself. So I wanted to put something up there that was interesting to look at but wasn't too distracting from the overall design. One of the main problems that I ran into when I was trying to design this was that I couldn't find a shelf that was big enough to act as a closet storage space. So I ended up going with another wooden loft. Now you're probably noticing that I'm clipping it into my character's head. This is because if I put it any higher it would be too close to the roof and it wouldn't really look like a shelf. But then there wouldn't really be any point in putting it any lower because it's already chopping off his head. This is one of the things that I had to compromise for because of the lack of space. So in the end, I pretty much just decided that the only thing that mattered here was whether or not the concept was being displayed properly. Because I felt that the story it was telling was worth a lot more than the function of me being able to use it. Now there's no real definitive height for how high or how low it can go. My opinion is that as long as it looks like it's a shelf, it's usually good. The only thing to be careful of is that you don't put it too low, otherwise your character will instead sleep on top of it instead of sleeping on the bed. Found that one out the hard way. The last little bit of detail that I like to put is to place a set of blankets on top of the shelf. I'll just kind of move them over so that they're visible and turn them a little bit slightly to either angle that I feel is fine. Now you're free to put whatever you want up there, but I wouldn't put too much otherwise you run out of item count. The reason that I decided to go with those blankets is because I felt that they were able to fill the space enough to fit the purpose of storytelling. This way it kind of looks like you're using the shelf for something, but without taking too much out of your item count. Now that we're done with the closet, we can begin placing down the furniture for the rest of the second floor. For this part, I'll build the rest of the second floor down here on the first floor. I like to use the stage panel for measurement purposes so that way I know where I need to place the items so that they aren't clipping into anything when I move them up to the second floor. Now at this point, it will be kind of important that you get all of the furniture down where you generally want them to be. I don't usually worry too much about the tabletop items until I've gotten all of the core items up. And the reason for that is because the tabletop items can be moved and replaced anytime that you want them to very easily. However, if it is a floor item, you will have to use the glitches to get it back up. So these items in particular aren't really that easy to move and replace at any time. Now the main idea that I was going for with the second floor was that I wanted it to be somewhat of a study. A place where my character might sit down and potentially plan his adventures of sorts. But I was also trying to make it feel like somewhat of a homey place. A place that was basically more or less his own little corner. That and I really wanted it to look kind of pretty, so... <laughs> I spent a lot of time trying to pick out items that would make this area feel more or less really relaxing to hang out in. Ironically, I spend more time in this corner of the apartment than any other part of it, honestly. So by this point, you can probably already see that it's starting to take form. I think at this point, it's kind of important to make sure that you get all of your fine adjustments done. You test out the furniture just to kind of make sure that everything is where you want it to be exactly. For example, with this chair, you see that I'm moving around quite a bit here. Just because I want to make sure that I don't have to redo it again. Testing can be something as simple as moving around the area or taking your character and having them sit down in the area that you want them to sit down in, just to kind of see how the measurements are looking at that point. You can move the items together further apart however you think will fit your character the best. I honestly think it's a good idea to tailor everything to the size of your character, because this will be more or less their home. It just kind of makes sense in my head that it would be built to be comfortable for them. 
Now what you can see that I'm doing here is I'm just doing like a mass glitch to get all of the items that are together up onto the second floor using the floor item glitches. In this case, you do have to go by the smallest hitbox just to make sure that everything will go up, but this will save you a lot of time. You might have also seen that I missed the chair a couple of times. That one has the smallest hitbox out of all three of those items that just went up. The bookcase, however, has an even smaller hitbox, so I try to do that one separately. Because you can really only do it with the Riviera wall shelf. Now one of the things to keep in mind is that if you're glitching these items up all at the same time, you do want to make sure that you remember to do the final rotation on all of them before you move on, otherwise they'll fall back to the ground. Personally I find that if you're doing a lot of these glitches in bulk, it's really easy to forget to do the final step, and then be forced to redo all of it. This next step here is really only if you decide that you want to put that NPC up there. I just have a strange fondness for the, the elegant nodes, so I have a tendency to put them everywhere. But if you do want to put one of these up on the second floor, you would have to glitch them much similar to how you would get the rest of the furniture up onto the second floor. These guys, they have a really small hitbox, so I like to do them first. The only weirdness about them is that as you are glitching them up, you'll move the sort of black mannequin marker that you see in layout mode up. But while that moves up, the NPC outside of layout mode actually won't move at all. I think most of the other NPCs are generally easier. The elegant nodes are kind of difficult to do at first simply because they're already floating. So sometimes it's hard to tell if it's moving at all, but this is essentially its spawn point. Basically, once I have that up to where I want it to be, I make sure that I rotate it in case it decides to fall back to the ground and I end up crying again. And then I exit the room, and then I re-enter. And basically what should happen is that the NPC will now be loaded on top of the wooden loft. And then from here we can just float up the rest of the furniture the same way that we did the rest of it. Again, I like to do these in batches, however it might be difficult a little bit depending on how far apart each of the items are. In this case I got lucky in that they were just close enough that I could float each of them up together. The key point is that the loft that you're using to float them up is, at the very least, underneath the very center point of each of the items. And again, I want to make sure that I rotate all of the items before I move on so that they don't fall back to the ground again. And with that, we now have the core items for the second floor complete. That's it for part 1 of this series. In part 2, we'll be focusing on finishing up the first floor. In addition to that, we'll be finishing up all of the extra decorations such as the tabletops and fun little knickknacks that I've placed around the room. This will also include the lights, the food, the elegant nodes, and more or less all of the little things that we need to make this place feel like home. To close this video, I really do want to thank you guys all for the positive comments that were on my previous video. A lot of it was very unexpected for me, and I was very happy that I was able to contribute to the community in my own small way here. I can't promise that I'll be able to make new videos too regularly, but I'll do my best to release new content for you guys every once in a while, so feel free to like and subscribe if you want to see more of that. Unfortunately, these videos do still take a long time for me to complete because I'm actually fairly new to the process of video editing, so having some indication of whether you guys would like to see more of that content or not would actually be really helpful to me. If you have any suggestions on how I can improve my videos, or if you found that anything was over-explained or not explained enough, I would appreciate it if you could leave your feedback in the comment section. Thanks again so much, I hope you guys have a great day, and I'll see you in part 2.